In this video, we discuss a couple of more ways that the real-world op-amps deviate from our ideal model that we've been using. First of all, and we've talked about this from the very beginning, but the open-loop gain A0 is not infinite. It's very large, and as we've said, it can be as, as great as, um, or it can be on the order of 50,000 to 100,000, maybe even as high as 200,000. Second of all, the amplifier gain is a function of frequency. In other words, the gain is not constant for all frequencies. As is true in any electrical system, there's an unavoidable resistance and capacitance that deteriorates the performance at higher frequencies. This can also lead to instabilities and oscillations. As we'll see shortly, to compensate for this effect, the designer intentionally adds capacitance to give a low-pass characteristic with a cutoff frequency well below the frequencies where instabilities or oscillations can occur. By placing that cutoff frequency at significantly lower frequencies makes it so that that pole or that that cutoff frequency dominates the transfer function. So the open loop gain then, A, instead of being a constant, becomes a function of frequency. And it turns out, or not it turns out, it, that transfer function then has the form of a low-pass filter. We recognize this from our Chapter 1 um, discussions, that this is the transfer function of a low-pass filter that has a gain or maximum value of A0 and a cutoff frequency at omega sub B. Using Laplace domain terminology, the designer intentionally adds a pull that dominates the amplifier's characteristic. The frequency response then is found by letting S equal J omega, and we get then that A of J omega is equal to, again, the open loop gain over this denominator. As the frequency omega continues to increase to where it becomes much greater than the cutoff frequency, this term in the denominator dominates the denominator, and we then can approximate the transfer function or the frequency response as being A0 omega sub B over J omega. Then the magnitude of the transfer function becomes just A0 omega B over omega. We def decline or we, not def we define the term A0 omega sub B to be omega T, which we're going to call the gain bandwidth product, or the unity gain value. Unity gain makes sense. When omega equals A0 omega sub B, the magnitude of the transfer function is 1. So from the low pass, low frequency part of the transfer function where the magnitude of the transfer function was A0, as omega continues until it gets to the point that omega equals this numerator, the magnitude of the transfer function will have declined and dropped down to where it then has unity gain or a gain of 1. And again, as I mentioned, A0 omega B is a product is known as the unity gain bandwidth, and we're going to refer to it with the uh, variable name omega sub t. This graph is the graph of the magnitude of the frequency response function for one of these internally compensated op amps. Because it's on a log-log plot, it's also referred to as a Bode plot, and we've talked about Bode plots before. At DC and very low frequencies, the magnitude of the transfer function is A0. Now in this case, A0 is 100 dB. Remember decibels. In the units of decibels, that's equal to 20 times the log base 10 of A. So 100 dB would be a would give us a log base 10 of A would be 5. 5 times 20 is 100. So log base 10 of 100,000 corresponds to that 5. So at DC, A0 equals either 100 dB or 100,000. Now notice that as we drop in 20 dB increments, that 20 dB increment corresponds to a factor of 10 decrease. In other words, 80 dB corresponds to or is equal to 20 
log base 10 of x, well, in this case, x then equals 10,000. To say it the opposite way, 10,000 corresponds to a decibel scale value of 80 dB. So at 80 dB, we are at 10,000. This drop right here of 20 dB corresponds to a factor of 10 drop. We went from 100,000 to 10,000. Another 20 dB gives us another tenth, or a drop to one-tenth, so 10,000 to 1,000. Another tenth takes us to 100, another tenth to 10, another tenth to 1. And again, each one of those corresponds to a 20 dB drop. So as the gain decreases, as the gain decreases, we move further along the frequency axis. And we talk about at, uh, at 100 dB or a gain of 1,000, we have a gain of 100,000 up to 10 hertz. Coming out to the next point here, we have a gain of 10,000 at a frequency of 100 hertz. So we can think of this as a bandwidth. If we want a gain of 100,000, we can have a gain of 100,000 with a bandwidth of 10, 10 hertz. A gain of 10,000 corresponds to a bandwidth of 100. We have a bandwidth of 1,000 with a gain of 1,000, a gain of 100, 10,000, and so on. So you'll notice that the way this, by this nature, the product of the gain times the bandwidth is always the same. 100,000 times 10 is a million. 10,000 times 100 is a million. Going on down, 10 times 100,000 is a million. In other words, the gain bandwidth product is a constant, and in this case is equal to 10 to the sixth, or 1 million. This is a characteristic of a single time constant uh, circuit. It is dropping off at 20 dB per decade. As we've already pointed out, 20 dB corresponds to a one-tenth, changing to one-tenth, a drop down to one-tenth of where it was before. And we drop that much with every factor of 10 increase. So we're coming by a factor of one-tenth, we're increasing by 10. The product of those two numbers remains the same, and that product is referred to as the gain bandwidth product. And again, that is just a characteristic of a single time constant um, filter. This linearity is a result of that approximation that we said that uh, the magnitude of A of J omega for frequencies much greater than the cutoff frequency could be approximated by A0 omega sub B over omega. It's dropping off as 1 over omega gives us this minus 20 dB per decade drop. From this, we can see the additional significance of that, uh, that term F sub t that we call the unity gain bandwidth. Here it is. The unity gain bandwidth is the bandwidth where the, function, the filter has unity gain, or the magnitude of the transfer function is 1, or corresponds to 0 dB. So this unity gain bandwidth, unity gain bandwidth, is the same value as the gain bandwidth product. We sometimes refer to the gain bandwidth product as GB, so we can say then that the gain bandwidth product is also equal to the unity gain bandwidth. Finally, this graph is taken from the data sheet of an LM324 op amp. It is log log. You'll notice the frequency is in hertz, but that the uh, at but it is still a logarithmic scale for hertz, and we've got the vertical scale in dB. You'll notice that the LM324 is exactly the uh, filter that we were just talking, or is the op amp that we were just talking about. You'll notice that the break frequency, or the cutoff frequency, or the corner frequency, whatever you want to call it, is down here at 10 hertz. And so from 10 hertz on, it is dropping off from uh, or at the rate of 20 dB per decade until you get out here to the unity gain 
where unity gain bandwidth f of t equal to 10 to the 6th.